Hello and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. Um, let me turn off my heater. I keep forgetting to do that. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So, uh, in this tutorial, I'm actually going to try to accomplish a request here from a long, very patient man uh, on YouTube, Twister. This is a shout out to you. Thank you for your request, and I apologize it's taken this long to get to you. Um, but this is hopefully what you want to know or what something that can help you. Uh, but essentially what he wanted to see is how to create mountain ranges using variable uh, mountains and things like that. And there are two ways that I came up with that I thought provided good results. And that is the draw node and the bomber method. So let's go ahead and talk about the draw node first. Um, the draw node in itself creates mountain ranges, so it's one of the easier ways to do things. As you can see here, I only have these nodes right here which create the landscape. The rest is texturing. So very few nodes and it came out with a, a pretty appealing looking landscape. So let's take a look at the draw node. This is the draw node that I made. Um, and these are the mountain ranges. And what I did is I increased the sprawl a bit more and the scaling all the way to max. And what I did with the draw node, if you look at the guides, you can see here I colored in the top part for the mountains. And I had this little piece coming down here just so you can see that it, it blends well when you stray off a little bit. So uh, this is the mountain range that it came up with. And this is something that's going to look more akin to like what you'd get with DEM data, uh, DRM, or yeah, DEM data, D-E-M. Um, so you have your mountains and your valleys, and then you have additional valleys. Like you can put this into a 3D program, and you can model a road going up into the mountain valley here and onto the other side. So this is one way you can do it. And then I put these in here just for some little foothills. It actually reminds me a lot of Tooele County uh, in Utah. Uh, they have a lot of little mountain ranges like this that go into bigger the Wasatch Front mountain ranges. So this is one way to do it and it's probably the easiest way. Um, but the one drawback to this and most of these methods actually is that you're gonna have a flat land out here and no land is gonna be completely flat in nature. So what I did is I used a worse lands, put a fractal terrace on it just so I can change up just a little bit, add some terracing, and then I eroded it and then combined it to get this look. So now we have this ground out here that's not all flat and we still have our mountain range coming in. And the combine is using max with a small ratio uh, towards the mountain ranges. And you can use whatever blend method that works well for you. So there's the mount and there's a mountain range right here. Now this is a very large scale mountain range. That's why it, it's it's kind of double speak here almost. It's like it's a large landscape but we have small features and that's because it's like if you took a big chunk of land and you're looking at that it's not just an individual mountain so uh, and then I went through and textured it the normal way I normally would and this is how it came out it's like this um, I just did some very basic texturing I didn't really do a whole lot um, a whole lot of very intricate texturing so let's pin that as the underlying underlay if I can speak that way we get accurate results here um, but as you can see here we have our rocks and we have our valleys which I put a little bit of vegetation in um, dirt on the ground here all that fun stuff and that's one way you can make a mountain range hopefully that covers one way you can do it if that's what you're looking for if not just let me know I, I love making videos um, and I promise I'll get to this one sooner uh, so um, you don't have to worry about waiting forever. Now let's look at the bomber method. So this is the bomber method. Um, the bomber method just takes a whole bunch of mountain primitives and bombs them together like this. And that creates these little peaks all over the place. And now what I did is to get rid of this big prominent mountain in the middle, I used a gradient right here. And I combined that gradient as a subtraction which got rid of a lot of the stuff that we didn't want. I wanted to make a range, so I didn't want to use all of this. I only wanted to use enough to make a range. So I used this, and then I used a mask. And I drew the mask right here where this little mountain is, blurred it, combined it with this gradient, the same gradient as a subtract, and that got rid of that. Now we don't have that anymore. We just kind of pinpointed that one uh, 
mountain peak right there and got rid of it um, just to clean it up a bit. Then I displaced it. Displacing it gives it a little bit more interesting features and a little more valleys that kind of offshoot into it. And then eroded it. And that is what we were left with. Now we have a mountain range here and we have a mountain range here that goes all the way across our scene. Now this is just a very quick and easy way to do it. Uh, you can add more stuff in to make it more mountainous. You have additional peaks in there if you wanted. Um, and then the same thing is true here. I used a worse lens. I find worse lens is the best to use as the go-to for a floor because it already has a lot of flat features, but they are still detailed. And then I eroded that just so I could add some additional little erosion. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. Combined that together with blend, and the ratio is set really low, so we bring in those mountains a little bit more. And then just the usual texturing that I did. And again, just not very intricate texturing. Um, they did find that this one looked a little bit better. It's kind of buggy because I have the pin set on the other one, and I have just these in different groups. So to make this look right, you just uh, right click on this combine, do pin as underlay, and now it should look right. Yeah. I thought this one looked really cool. It's kind of like sulfuric acid or sulfur everywhere, I guess, and I just made these dark mountain hills with the dirt. Uh, but that is that mountain range there. So those are two ways to do it. Um, I didn't make another method here, but additionally what you could do, just so we have one more thing we can try, uh, you can make a mountain make a couple mountains if you want but in this case I'm just gonna use one just copy it. it's gonna be cut and paste essentially but I just wanted to kind of show you what you could do so we'll just use this one mountain and we'll just reuse it over and over again I'll just use three of them I think three of them will work and then what we'll use is a transform node <clears throat> and we have to attach the mountains to this transform node. Uh, but we have to make a couple of them. We just can't use one. We have to have a, a couple transform nodes. Because essentially what we're doing is we're telling Gaia where to place these mountains. So let's make another transform. Let's make two more. There we go. And we can combine them all together after. But we'll just start with this. Now when you're playing with the transform node, you gotta be kinda careful. Small changes here result in big changes here. You don't want too big a changes. So pick whichever one you wanna transform first. And I like making sure that north is where I'm facing. So I'm looking up. And you can move it on the X and Y, so X and Y. Let's move it this way real quick. And you see how it's shifted. And now we can move it up on the Y, uh, other way. I just want the range to be there in the back, like that, maybe, and then a little bit more on the X. There we go, and now we can do the same thing here. So just, uh, uh, I gotta go the other way, jeez. Come on Dylan, don't be an idiot. And we can just keep this one right where it's at, and then we can move this one uh, more this way actually in the negative direction and up. There we go. Now let's go ahead and combine these together. <clears throat> and for this you can use a very simple combine method using max and you can increase the ratio on all of it. So now you bring in both of those peaks. And let's use another combine here being buggy. You can also use a multi-combine if you wanted. You don't have to use a bunch of combined nodes. You can use a multi-combine. And we'll just do max here. And increase that. There we go. Now we have all of our mountain peaks over there. Uh, we have these valleys. Um, and we can do whatever we want after that. So let's go ahead and offshoot and erosion. And 
there we go. And in this case, we have the same looking erosion patterns just because we have the same looking mountain, but this is a quick and fast way of doing it. Uh, you would want to be a little bit more um, selective and random with your mountains, obviously, but this is just another way you can do it. Uh, just some very soft erosion here. Uh, we're going to get a blend right here, or a harsh blend right here, because uh, the mountains are close to each other. So to fix that, we can use something like thermal. There goes my heater again. Hopefully you don't hear it in the background. So here's the thermal. Thermal will just help blend it together a little bit. And I use I like using uh, the preset. You're not going to see it here. It's going to be cut off. But I like using the preset uh, strong talus. Might not look good in this case. It usually looks better with terraces. Now that looks all right. Then we just have really strong talus flows. And then you can go out and texture however way you want. So that's a very cut and dry, cheap way of doing it. So you have those three methods. Um, you have the draw method, uh, which you have with it, which results with this. I think this is probably the fastest way of doing it, and you can still have a lot of control, um, and you get good results. Then you have the bomber method, which is gonna not show the accurate one because I have one of these pinned. So let's unpin. Pin that as underlay. There we go. So that would be the the fastest and cheapest way to do it, in my opinion. That yields pretty decent results. You get some good mountain ranges. Uh, then the bomber method would be the next one, and then this option here. So um, it all comes down to what you essentially want and what you're looking for. But if this didn't quite cover what you're talking about, uh, please just let me know because I will create another one. If you can provide some examples of what you're thinking of, then I can look at those and I can set it up for you. So those are three options. Pick and choose. Hit me up if you have any other questions. And uh, I'll reach out to you in a comment on one of my other videos and let you know that it's being posted. That way you know to watch it. And then you can provide your feedback. Thank you, sir. I uh, really appreciate your... Um, your patience, you have the patience of a saint. So uh, I, I really much appreciate that. So I'll see you all in the next video.